Hey there, Unawarriors! Ami Goblin here once again, bringing you the latest in Unawar action! We are going to continue directly into our series on the quarterfinals for the Championship March 24 tournament. These next two players are, again, a very evenly matched set of players. Both of them coming in at the 27 to 2800 range. We've got Blaze94 against Head T. Blaze94 playing from France. One of the best players in the game, again, coming in at number 10 on the championship ladder, ranked number 14 on the general 1v1, a frequent participant in these round of four quarterfinals, semifinals. Really one of these players who he hasn't quite gotten to the point where he's taken a number two or a number one spot, but I know that this player is really looking to make it happen. He has been attempting it over and over and over again getting denied but this is his next step to try and make it happen and I, I think if he can win this game this is a chance for him he's already cracked the top 10 can I make it to that top five that's where the prestige is gonna really up its level in order to do that he's gonna have to get through the Ukrainian player head T head T also no slouch I would say the favored player in this game taking away some really impressive wins including the winner of the 2021 championship and the uh coming in as a, again a frequent player in these round of fours always making to at least the round of eight and round of 16. so i'm interested to see which of these players is going to pull up it's there's a lot on the line for both of these players 2024 they're both kind of in round of eight players so this is an opportunity to be a semi-final player pull that ribbon into their score zone, and probably pull up another number on that championship ladder rank. So there's a lot on the line for these two players. There's definitely someone's going down the ladder, someone's going up the ladder. That's what's on the table today. Let's see how this is going. Again, it's going to be on Wide Valley version. Three, 100 credits per base, zero initial credits, just like in the other matches with this Titan v. Titan matchup. You are especially going to have to be incredibly careful about the way you spend your credits. Economical play is the way it's done. There's probably you expect to see some build up on both sides. And then whoever makes the first mistake is going to lose the game. When you see a matchup like this on a dynamic map, particularly against TVT at high level play, mistakes lose games more than challenging ideas win games so that's really what we're looking for who can maintain the longest without making an error without any further ado let's get into the match playing on the left hand side as the red titan trailing from ukraine it will be head d and his opponent playing on the right hand side as the blue titans hailing from france it will be blaze 94 let's get this game underway blaze 94 Pulling those cities and those tiles. And here's where the opening is. Do they opt for a mecha or are they going to hold off? A single mecha rather than a double being Head T's decision. Now we see speeders coming out from both. And Head T with that saving is going to be able to purchase two speeders on round two. Still seeing a pretty mirrored opening. Head T now looking like he wants to push onto that northern side. Blaze responding by mirroring back. Trying to get a little bit more center control on the southern hemisphere. More speeders coming out. Now we've got four speeders to three speeders here. Head TE, head T pulling these speeders back, not wanting that southern spirit to be undefended. And now a full pullback across the board from Blaze. Both of these players just jockeying for positions, trying to fill each other out. The, head, the Eclipse now is going to move into the center, get an egg five shot, and it looks like he's going to be able to snipe out one of those mechas. That Eclipse a little bit exposed, but with that mecha put in front of it and those speeders behind it, I do think he's in a pretty spud position. First blood to a net play is 94, 100 credit kill count. And now Head T, instead of wanting to move forward, he is going to pull back and try and maintain a higher speeder count. He is banking on that higher speeder count being what could get him that match there i see a lot of mechas on both sides but with that eclipse combo with those speeders who is going to win out as the stronger decision head t continuing to pump out speeders and the walker coming out on the other side and that's going to give an enormous amount of control from blaze it's going to really make head t think about any pushes that walker is going to get very big free shots against any speeders that decide to get a little too bold pushing that walker forward getting a little bit more control dangerously close to that health tile 
in terms of his ability to reach. See more mechas and speeders being pumped out here. And now Blaze probing for weakness. Another walker coming out from Blaze now. Sorry, from Head T. And Head T looking like he's going to try and take control of that north. It is now becoming a north versus south buildup. Who is going to make the first major advance? I do see Mechas getting pushed closer into that southern line. This could get dangerous real quick. And there's going to be a forward direct walk from the walker. And now I'm excited. And now the Eclipse making an advance. Going to see if he can snipe out some units. First Mecha is going to be eliminated by that speeder. Is he going to continue the push? Now that Walker going to take a big six shot against that Mecha. It looks like this could be it. Here are the speeders coming now trying to walk away this wall. Can Blaze do enough damage this round to maintain an advantage that Head T can't walk back from? Or is he going to leave enough units on the table for Head T to get a damaging counterattack? And that walker looking very dangerously exposed. And that speeder is going to be able to maintain reach. And now that neg 7 shot against the walker. Now things are looking pretty dire for Head T. That is an expensive shot. I do see units being ported across threatening possible base captures to the back. Also eliminating the ability for units to retreat. More ports coming in getting that center control. That walker going to have to retreat backwards. And now here comes Head T's counterattack. Will it be enough? He's got 400 points of material behind. He is going to get a speeder kill here. Can he get an additional speeder kill? Looks like a second speeder kill is on the table. Can he get a third speeder kill or even better, an eclipse kill? Is he going to go for the eclipse kill? That would be absolutely huge right now. These units are going to continue getting that same spot gang up. And it looks like that Eclipse is going to go down. And now Head T pulling ahead by 400 points. But he's still got to worry about these ported in units. That could become a threat if he doesn't deal with it soon. And now that full health walker continuing to advance forward. And now Blaze on his second attack spot. He is going to attack that city tile. And that city tile looking dangerously exposed. Or that base tile looking dangerously exposed. More speeder kills coming from Blaze94. It looks like he's going to pull ahead in the credit count. And here comes the attack from the Mecha base cap and a big four shot on that city tile sitting speeder at the north. More Mechas being pumped out. Another speeder coming out. An additional Mecha. And now Head T is going to have to respond. The match is evened up. This is his opportunity to pull ahead. Let's see what Head T's response. These ported mecha units are now reactivated. They're going to have to be dealt with now. Continuing to attack the speeder line. This speeder line. It is points of material on the board for him. That walker able to get an additional two shot. And with a combination, I think he might have another speeder kill in him. But he still has to deal with that base capture. That base is looking very exposed on the north. He's good. definitely got to be concerned about it. And he's got to pull that speeder off the city tile. That's going to be huge. That's going to take income off the board for, Blade, for Head T this turn. And Head T desperately trying to deal with these, these mechas that have gotten into his back line. Blaze94 now, 700 points under. He's got some ground to cover up, but with a big speeder kill there, it looks like he can make up that ground very quickly. Is he going to get an additional speeder kill? I think he will. And it looks like Blaze94 does have enough active units to even up and even pull ahead. Is that another set? Is that an additional speeder kill with that mecha shot? An additional speeder kill. And now Blaze94 pulling back into the lead 1.9 over 1.7. Pumping out some more mechas and speeders. Trying to replenish that line. He's still got that dangerous set of mechas in the back, threatening any base captures for exposed bases. And Head T still trying to push this advance line back. He's been playing defensive for almost the entire game. Ever since that walker got a shot, he's been having to play defensive. This is his first foray into real enemy territory. Trying to take a dominant position on that top. But that full health walker looking very scary. Head T trying to get an additional walker kill. Sorry, speeder kill. And another speeder kill is going to put him at 2.5 over 1.9. Is he going to get an additional speeder kill on top? No, but he will not get down to a 3 health. And it looks like these bases are secure. And now Blaze94 going to have to reposition some of these mechas at the south. 
push back the speeder line that has gotten into his base area. But with these mechas, these mechas doing a fantastic job of pushing back the speeder line. And now we see a second speeder kill on, come on the board. Blow for blow in this game. Can he knock that mecha off of the city tile and eliminate the income? No, he will not, but he will knock it down to a three health. And now Head T trying to finally clear out the remaining of these ported in mechas at that top north position. Doing a reshuffling of his units, pulling back from enemy territory, trying to reconsolidate. The ma Not a bad idea at this point. The match is pretty evened up. And out comes the Assimilator. He's going to try and heal up that walker. And those uh, he, th that Assimilator is in a great position to do a lot of heals. Will it be enough? And now Blaze94. Is he going to be able to get an elimination? That speeder on the city tile is going to be eliminated. Another round of extra income denied along with the speeder kill. Can he get an additional kill on that mecha on the city tile? It looks like he just might be able to knock it off. And now both the city tile incomes have been denied. That is huge. That could be a huge problem for Head T on the next round. Head T getting more ported mechas now from Blaze94 into that back line, continuing to aggro. And there's the GG. Blaze94 taking the game in 15 rounds. And what a match. A, it, that credit count kept waffling back and forth. If you look over here, things really started to just have a very slight but constant downward spiral. As on from round, I believe it was round 12, round 11, right here, where Blaze is continuing to probe for weaknesses. Now, this... This walker looks like it's in a great position. It might have been better to place him down here in one of these lower tires. It's a little dangerous to put him in this spot. Yeah, you've got three mechas here in this position, but Blaze has so many speeders, and along with this Eclipse that's able to shoot over the mountain tiles in the center to get a shot on this mecha, he's able to eliminate this mecha wall, and what he's really able to do is knock out... I'm going to speed this up here. He's knocking out that line, and then... Takes out this additional mecha, and with that last speeder is able to get this enormous 7 shot against the walker and negate the walker's ability to control the board. Beforehand, if you look here, this walker had its pick of 6 shots and 5 shots and 7 shots across the board. you got to be really careful about what you place when that walker has this level of control. But now, this walker is the only one with a full health. And now with its 3, all those shots have been completely reduced. He's got to move it backward to keep it from being eliminated. And he never really recovers from this. Continuing to play defensively, he uh, Head T does make around round 14... An attempt, one final push, can I get to this base and cap it and cripple the ability? But Blaze94, in addition to maintaining control, pushes it back and just does a fantastic job of constantly knocking these units off of these city tiles and denying income that Head T just cannot play without. He does not have the resources now to keep up with this play. I think it was an interesting decision to bring out this assimilator here but was it the right call that assimilator maybe a little too late maybe a round earlier when he could have gotten these heals off when he really needs it but right now what he needs more than the healing he needs the damage i do think if he had an additional if he had like one more round to get these heals off in time it could have been enough to re to reestablish but with all of these constant ports this backlog of mechas just constantly harassing his back line was a thorn in the side of head t for the entire mid game and the end game and it's just something that really he wasn't able to deal with he couldn't deal with a front in enemy territory and a front in the center and a front in his backside all at once and it just started to evaporate his ability to control the board extremely well played it looks like blaze 94 is going to be our contender for the upcoming round congratulations to blaze 94 and well done we will see him in the semifinals and i will see you guys next time